Welcome to Catholic in America. Today, three priests, three men are going to talk about a woman's right to choose. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now, before we uh, talk about a woman's right to choose, I think we need to ask, uh, does a man have a, a voice in this matter? Yeah, or like, are we allowed to have an opinion on this? Uh, you are a married Catholic priest. You are a celibate Catholic priest. I'm a celibate Catholic priest as well. And we all three happen to be men. Yes, yeah, so right. as men, can we, can we say something uh, yeah. uh, about this? Because the question is always, it's always said, you know, excuse this, uh, no vagina, no, no voice. Yeah, no, 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 no uterus, yeah. no opinions. That's right. Sort of, yeah, keep keep your rosaries off my ovaries. That's you know, right. Yeah, all, all those things. All the things. Yeah. Um, so, in a sense, I I think uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of layers to that. One is that um, when we're talking about something, we're talking about as human persons, as human persons um, that affect other human persons. And abortion is not wrong because I want women. To be burdened. That's that, right. that's not that's not why I'm against abortion, or because I I want women to be punished for having sex, and so you have to have this baby, right. or I want women to be controlled. And I think a lot of those things, if the when when those those sort of things that I would consider a caricature of the pro life stance are used, those obviously need to be be looked out uh, rejected out of hand. That abortion specifically is wrong because it, it involves the taking of an innocent human life. Full stop. Yeah. And so Period. as a human being. I am I am called to be against injustice, yeah. and so so I have an opinion about a direct uh, violation of the rights and dignity, the fundamental right, which is the right to life yeah. um, of another human person. And so that that's well, wherever that happens, wherever that is, the fact that it's been legalized and is now uh, you know um, medicinalized as being right. part of our medicine, and says and that is put before a vote for a country. Um, that where we have the ability to actually voice our opinions on things. So, so I would say yes, because it involves humanity, and, yeah. and every human person should have an opinion on those things. Yeah. yeah. I'd say two things. Um, one, the first being kind of jumping off of what Father Michael is saying, is that um, I think that it's a, a false, false choice to say that it's just that, because like the question is, is reproduction a woman's issue? Or is reproduction a human issue? Yeah. And if reproduction is a human issue, right, which requires male and female, right. then there's equal responsibilities for those parties who are involved in reproduction. Right. The courts have been clear about that. Yeah, so, so reproduction, yeah. yeah. So legally speaking, yeah. obviously, a, fa a male who fathers a child, regardless of whether or not he is a father, because right. a father is a relationship, <laughs> right. he at least has sired him. Right, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or sired her, depending upon the sex of the of the child who the male is involved in. That's why he has to pay child support and so forth. So right. reproduction is a human issue, which requires a male and female. Again, unless you're going outside of science and things like that. But regardless, naturally speaking, it's a human issue. And therefore, and it's also a cooperative issue. Like so, there's a cooperation, which is also why when there's heinous acts against cooperation, like rape, where one person's uh, no not a cooperative party, and therefore, and that's why there's crimes against that because, but the whole point being is like re reproduction is a, is a human issue and it affects mm -hmm. both men and it affects both women. And it's also why when the problems go wrong in that, both men and women share a burden as well as a weight and they also have responsibilities. And that's why we see that in all areas of life, in all areas of, of civil society. And that's just in civil. When you're talking about moral, which is like what are human beings and what ought we do and what ought we not do? Like there's a question of like, that this is not just, and if you put it all, if you put all the categorical weight onto women, that this is a, a human rights issue or it's a women's issue, right? It relieves men of the responsibility of their responsibility of how they have also contributed to this and where they also share equal weight. Right. And so the point being is it's not just a woman's issue. It is a human issue, which involves, and humanity involves both male and female. Which is not to discount the fact that women have to bear the physical brunt of labor. They're right. the ones who, whose bodies are on the line uh, with, within a pregnancy. They're the ones, you know, which is exa exactly why a Christian society has built up around protecting women when they are caring for our most vulnerable right. persons, which is a good society upholds women and their dignity and makes, ensures that when they're in that vulnerable position of 
before pregnancy, during pregnancy, after pregnancy, and during child rearing and everything else, that they are, are kept free from, from danger, that there's not undue pressure put on them, that good laws are, are in place to protect their rights, that people aren't exploiting them, that men who have sired the child actually have a, a, a fiscal and emotional responsibility to be a part yeah. of that, which, which again, in you know, the Christian sense is that's why you have you know, marriage, and right. that marriage is the lifelong union that can't be broken at will for the sake of the man and the woman, their mutual benefits, and for the, the siring and upbringing and raising of children. So there, in a sense, there's, there's, it is really important for us to recognize that there's a pain behind this, and obviously none of us are women, um, uh, one of us is, is a father with, with children that, uh, and recognizing that, but does not then say that, so therefore men can have no point. And I, 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 can, I can at least be aware of the fact that women have been exploited and hurt and taken advantage of and trampled and, and they have fears around this. And so we want to say like, well, men can have no place here. Men have right. no say here because of that reason. But the pain of that does, can't therefore lend it, create a new moral category in which... Right. In which right. It can't create yeah. another injustice. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because that, that's what tends to happen. Sure, and I mentioned a second, a second point. Yeah. And the second point is that, okay, free will, freedom, like, yeah. so when you're talking about a right to choose, to choose means free will, freedom, like my right to choose. But just seeing, you, you, apart from faith and apart from like theology, right, life precedes freedom. So like human freedom is a, is a faculty of every human person, but it's a faculty which remains dormant in, in persons until they actually can exercise intellect, reason, and so forth. So that's the whole thing. It's like, does a, does a baby choose things or does a baby move by instinct? But, but my point being is that you can't, you can't use your faculty of freedom until you are first alive, Yeah. right? And so that's the whole, that's kind of my, my second point that I would also point into this is like in order for people to actually have freedom, they must be first alive, which is also why the right of life precedes the ability to make use of those things that come along with right with, with life, which is freedom. So like, it's not that freedom and free will and, and choice is an, equal, is an equal good to life, right? Yeah. Life, is, life is the more primal good because if you're not alive- It presupposes life. You yeah, have, yeah. For, at least yeah. for human beings, like you have to be alive in order to exercise freedom. Right, and so that's also why, like, yeah. when you're evaluating two goods, right, and the, and that's the thing: freedom is a good, yeah. life is a good, but they're not categorically equal goods, right. like because mm -hmm. one of them comes first, and that's where some people never get to exercise their ability to have freedom, right. right? But that's why, if you're not alive, you can't exercise it. So, like, when you're getting into a question of of a child's right to life versus a woman's right to right. And the integrity of her body, the right to... Which is never framed in that way. Correct, but that's what I'm saying. It's never framed like, does she, But yeah. just as a mother has a right to life, mm -hmm. her offspring, whether they be male or female, that's the other thing, is like now you're getting into other women's rights Correct. and you're getting into mm -hmm. male rights and females' rights because that child, if it's a human person, if it's yeah. a human being, that child also has rights, which, again... And you can't, if you place one person's rights as being more important than the other one, then that, that's the very definite of inequality yeah. and of injustice. Tyranny. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where some people, some people are more equal than others. Right, right. As, as animal, <laughs> as, as the pigs <laughs> and animal farm would yeah. say, right? Yeah. right. Yes. That's yes. It. So, so the Supreme Court, we know several years ago, uh, overturned Roe versus Wade and, and leaving abortion practices uh, really up to each state. And so... I mean, you know, the question has to be asked, how does that, how's that impacted our country, and particularly this election that, that's coming up, because we know that that's a, a key issue in this election. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, it, it's, it's gonna get, you know, the water's gonna get a lot hotter within that. And abortion really be, is being used as kind of the, um, I mean, definitely on the Democratic side, it's being used as, as, as how fervently and vehemently, you know, yeah. both for our presidential nominees, our current vice president, um, Vice President Harris, and with her, her VP pick, that trying to prove with every, every campaign commercial I've seen, and they're everywhere, my goodness, they yes. just, someone's put a lot of money into this. Well, they've it, raised a lot of money. Every, here everything her. I put, yeah. you know, is, is basically talking about basically uh, reproductive rights, as it's being phrased, mm -hmm. in every single campaign ad. On the other side, when in the Republican side, um, both with uh, with his vice presidential um, candidate 
kind of the move towards trying to have a more moderate stance on abortion, yeah. not being, you know, maybe softening past things were said by- Which uh, is by interesting that also- Against that, abortion, yeah. That's you know, a more yeah. moderate stance mm -hmm. that actually uh, President Trump and uh, J.D. Vance are kind of taking on this. And there's actually been people who've been criticizing J.D. Vance for his very strong stance now and that he is softening his stance. Yeah. But now whether or not that's utilitarian to get elected, which I think he's actually on, on record basically saying <laughs> some of that is like you have to get elected in order to make a difference. Yeah. Um, but regardless, like now the more, now this moderate stance, which is actually kind of a softening of the, of the traditional Republican stance, is one yeah. of the things that President Trump took off the Republican platform yes. um, was softening the Republican stance on abortion. But now the way in which it's being marketed in, in the media is that this softening of the of the conservative Republican Party stance is now being called uh, extremism? Yeah, right. Which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. right. Because they have become, in terms of their platform issues, have they, have they become now even more extreme? Because like you go back and look at even Bill Clinton's position, safe, legal, and rare. Oh, right. yeah, thirty, 30 years now, ago. But this, now, like, yeah, yeah the, the the recent movement is to unrestricted access to abortion, which mm -hmm. actually even most Democrats that I know. Right, wouldn't go for that. Wouldn't go for wouldn't go for complete yeah. unrestricted. Yeah, but act. the policy platform has become so as the Republicans have shifted away from trying to restrict abortion to try to have maybe kind of like abortion should be limited except for cases of of rape, incest, and the health of the mother, which is a very interesting. Yeah, you know, grouping of 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 uh, of caveats there, which we can talk we, about that. We kind of did a show on that not and, too long and, ago. And yeah. and this and the the Democrats who have been openly campaigning pro-abortion have, have now shifted past the safe, legal, and rare of the Bill Clinton era, um, you know, early 90s and mid 90s Democrats to it should be, it should be legal yeah. at all stages. There should be absolutely no restrictions to it. Anything that hints of restricting um, women's access to abortion is something that needs to be fought with a full way the constitution, constitutional amendments need to be made, made make yeah. ensure that no state can have any sort of, 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 of blocks to that or limiting uh, women's access to abortion. So yeah, it, it's, it is fascinating how the, the, you know, the, what do you call that window? The, uh, uh, the shifting, you know, window as far as like kind of the, the middle ground has shifted so far towards abortion rights in this country without any actual conversation about what abortion is. Right. right. There's mm -hmm. no national conversation about what is an abortion? Why are we arguing about this? It, it all gets, gets reduced to, to semantics. It all gets reduced to to euphemisms yeah. and be like, oh, this is actually what it looks like. Because I, I think if we actually watched watch videos of this, and I don't want to do that. I've, I I've seen you know I've seen yeah. these videos before, and it's yeah. it's horrifying. God have mercy on us. Mm -hmm. You know, women who've gone through abortions, um, who have experienced the pain of that, and obviously we don't want to want to subject yeah. them to reliving that. But but we've talked about this stuff. We talked everything about the actual action itself. What a, what an abortion does which we will continue to say is the intentional taking of an innocent human life. Yeah, that's that, always wrong. Yeah. I don't I want to open up Pandora's box too much on this, but in terms of keeping uh, consistent with uh, some of the language which is coming from the far far left platform, you could say that this is now a men's issue. Hmm. Right? Have you have you, heard, have you heard this one? Please. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. that for Women who are biologically men. Oh yeah, right. That this now becomes if they're biologically men. That this is actually that right. actually abortion now has become a men's and women's issue. Interestingly, yeah. If you follow follow the train of thought, yeah. right. Because I, I don't even know how how. We, <laughs> yeah. No. So if you have a fe if you have a if you have a female who yeah. identifies right. as a man, right. right, and therefore she is to legally be referred to as him, mm -hmm. right. And there, but or a man who identifies a man, biological man who identifies as woman is now supposed to be legally cor correct. But now, woman, but right? now, but now the question is, is in terms of the of the shifting in language. And this is why language shouldn't shift in this way if you're going to be right. a, a well, little I mean, modicum of that. Yeah, but but that now, over this. but yeah. that point being is that mm -hmm. now you might be, there's some who have I've, I've heard as well as read some uh, different articles that it's no longer just a woman's issue. It's now a woman's and men's Absolutely. issue because there are women who, there are men who have uteruses. They've had discussions right? about this so in, in front of senators and congressmen. I mean, it, it, this, this is a, you're not talking about a hypothetical or, or, or what's going on behind the scenes or some politicians talking about, I mean, there's been presentations done in, in the, you know, in the Congress and Senate and chambers and, and in uh, some of the committees uh, about this ex saying exactly that what should be in a man what you know what kind of things should be in a bathroom for a man and for a woman and that you know these things should be in both bathrooms and so right. 
Oh, um, sorry, but coming back, coming no, back to our absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. those things, yeah. I'm not sure, but going, I think it is it's kind of pertinent when you're saying yeah. that men don't have an that men yeah. don't have a say, or people would like to say that men don't have a say, sure. or that they shouldn't sure. uh, have a say in women's reproductive rights. Well, now we're getting to very, very interesting territory. You know? And it's usually the same people are advocating for that about, you know, blurring of the lines in that Planned Parenthood, largest abortion provider in the United States of America, yep. is also now the largest uh, provider of, of um, hormones for, for, for transgender treatment for teenagers as well. Um, yeah. So, that's, so, yeah, so, so. Uh, with this topic, I mean, kind of a broader question, but it is very pertinent to what we're talking about. Why is there a, a demand for abortion? I mean, why why does this this practice really exist? I mean, uh, on a real level. I mean, we can go supernatural here with this, but I think staying at the human level. Yeah. People have sex. Sex leads to babies. Babies are inconvenient. People want to have or, sex, or because, people, or, or people have sex and they never wanted to have babies. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so and, then, that and therefore, yeah. when the, when yeah. I mean, there's always been. I mean, that's why in ancient Rome there was laws against abortion, and there was laws against abortion throughout in many ancient societies. Like abortion is no, not a new thing. It's just that the practice has become very efficient. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, Rome, they did have legalized infanticide, though. So. Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah, yes. but but, yeah. but but regardless, it also depends on the period of time. Yeah. It, it shifts um, as well. But I mean, there's always been throughout societies and throughout history. There's always been uh, abortion, infanticide. There's even been various different times forms of contraceptives right. um, throughout all of history. It's just that because of technology, now we have uh, widespread access to so all of this, and we've and, gotten good at it. Correct. Human yeah. beings have gotten good, but I'd say very simply, it's exactly that: is people want to have sexual relations, and they don't want to have the the natural good consequence, which is children. That children are seen as kind of a byproduct of sex, as opposed to the product of sex. And when children are viewed as the byproduct of sex, and then you all of a sudden you get this byproduct, then men mentally it was like never intended, and therefore you get rid yeah. of it. Yeah. We're, we're how many how many years now? Um, Sixty years since the pill, more or less, or maybe like fifty something years since that, the pill. Yeah. Um, so basically, we've had a. We're getting two, old. I think it's like 60, 70 yeah, years. Yeah, two now. generations. <laughs> two generations that have come up and, you know, and are now becoming parents and grandparents, like with an intrinsic separation between sex and babies. Every yeah. generation and every, every civilization and humanity before that understood there was an intrinsic connection to those things. Right. Tried to, a lot of times also tried to avoid it. You know, in different ways, and a lot of times that was by following purity codes and not having sex till you're married, or trying to preserve your virginity, or you know, chastity belts. Ch you know, or yeah. if you did get pregnant out of wedlock, then you have a shotgun wedding, and yeah, again, none of this is 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 a condoning of those behaviors. Yeah. But we're now in a place where we're in, we live in a contraceptive society, so we are surprised by pregnancy. Pregnancy continues to get, which is, is, is interesting. You know, yeah, people yeah. are shocked. How did yeah. this happen? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you know yeah. that, that like, you know, recognize like squirrels understand how this happens, but right, we, right. we yeah, human yeah, beings yeah, are, are surprised yeah. by well, it now. Squirrel, yeah. They yeah. might not understand it, but they're not surprised. They're not, yeah, they're not surprised <laughs> at all. Uh, but. So the, uh, so anyway, so it is, I think we're, we're uh, the, the move towards abortion, and actually uh, Planned Parenthood versus Casey actually put this forward. So this is now precedent in our legal system that abortion is a form of contraception. It is needed, it is relied upon by women as, as a contraception. And so the fallback to, if we expect I should have consequence-free sex, which there's no such thing, no. If, I, if we expect that as a society, the major consequence obviously is a baby, and so we should be free of those consequences for that, which is <laughs> this, this, this consequence-free, because I remember when uh, former President Obama was talking about his daughters, you know, like you know, adults yeah. now, but they were young, maybe preteens at the time, Saying if one of them got pregnant, he wouldn't want to punish, have them be punished for that for that mistake. Yeah, yeah. By that, having that, a baby, because that's what that is. Yeah, and and so in a sense, it's kind of like you, you, you can almost see it as like, oh, he's trying to be like a good loving dad here. So I've been realize like, oh, that's what's actually being discussed. You want to get down to it. And this is not a moral judgment of anybody. Is saying is saying like, well, my granddaughter or grandson should be aborted for this for the sake of protecting, yeah. you know, for the sake of mistake made by my daughter. And it's like, that's, no, again. It would we, be we, punishment if they had to have them. Right, the absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, it's just interesting where that where that puts us. Yeah, I mean, there's also the, and there's also kind of an ideological um, play of this, because most people that I've met are not, I mean, that's where you'll get, that most people, uh, even people who support abortion, don't necessarily like abortion. Right. Right, but it's, it's, a, it's a means to an end to solve a problem, right? So it's not that they that they necessarily like abortion or that they think it's a good thing, but it's a means to an end to solve a problem. But it's like 
there's this ideological, this belief system, which is, again, to a certain extent, it's the difference between being charitable versus being truthful. Yeah. Or it's this idea of like, am I going to call people to virtue and demand excellence and virtue? Or am I going to be forgiving, but also kind of lower the bar? Yeah. So it's like this expectation of like, when, like it's kind of like, well, we can't really expect young people not to have sex. Right. Right. Versus, no, we can't expect young people not to have sex, like by, by modeling yeah. it, and yeah. by teaching yeah. it, and like teaching, but it's like, it's this, it's this expectation of like, well, it's kind of this thing, like, well, they're going to have sex, so we got to make sure that it's as safe and responsible, which is that yeah. it's, it's not responsible because you're taking away the responsibility, right. the consequence of the act. But it's this mentality, which is that we can't not, we can't stop them from having sex, but we can also stop them from, from ruining their lives, right? right? right. So right. there's a mentality there which is that the whole point being is that what's ruining their lives? What's ruining their lives is having a kid. Well, that's actually not really what's ruining their lives. The, the thing is that they're living in, a, in vice, right? right? They're, not, they're not living this, but it's kind of this expectation from adults. I can't expect my kids to live virtuously. And so in some cases, I can't expect them to live virtuously because how can I expect them to live virtuously when I didn't? When I'm virtu- not. Yeah, when, when I'm, I'm not, dating or I'm not. When I'm yeah. what not, or when I was their age, mm-hmm. I didn't. So I right. would be a hypocrite to challenge them to live in a way which is virtuous and which is higher than the way in which I live in many cases. That's what I've seen. Sure. Um, witnessed and things. And I understand that because it's just like, how can, I, how can I expect virtue of a person who I'm not modeling or I didn't do this? And therefore, there's this, this, this enabling spirit, this enabling mentality, which is that, but it was, it's rooted in this, in this sense of compassion, which is I'm going to have compassion for my kids to protect them from the worst consequences. But in terms of like virtue, excellent behavior, like, Mentality. I'm just saying there's there's an ideology here. Yeah. Yeah. The, there was something you said a second ago um, that abortion has now been accepted kind of as, as a contraceptive right. And so, I mean, you know, is abortion reproductive health care? I mean, going back to, you know, Hippocratic Oath, do no harm, sort of, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah no. <laughs> um, like in that, it's the, int- what abortion is, and this is this is different than, you know, than an ectopic pregnancy, than, you know, the, the two, you know, the other things that, that come up, that the it's the direct intentional killing of an unborn human life. Okay. That so, no, that's never necessary. Yeah. That, that, that direct action is never necessary. At times, there's double effect consequences of procedures that will end up taking the life of the child, right. you know, for the sake of saving the life of the mother. That's not the intended, you know, action um, that's happening. That's a whole kind it of, you know, area. Of, of that. And does. those things get yeah. lumped together. But I think it's very important to say that the direct intentional ending of a human of an unborn human life is never medically necessary therefore it should have no place in medicine and all the catholic health systems as imperfect as they might be and as large yeah. as they are that we have in the the bar on the best health system in the united states and probably throughout the world and we do not do abortions yeah and so you can have great health care um, um w- within yeah. within uh, like a good med- medical system and i think any any authentic medical system that is worth its you know that it is actually trying to uphold the dignity of the human person is not going to have abortion as part of their care. Right. So if I mean if that's true then why would an, why would a woman uh, uh, why would a woman opt for an abortion? Why would a woman opt for an abortion? Yeah. I mean there's there's I mean, there's a why there's there's yeah. so many reasons and some of which I I can sympathize with. Like mm-hmm. I, and I think that we've all dealt with women who had abortions who are considering having an abortion. Um, we've dealt with the long-term effects, the consequences of that, who, and the women have dealt with that as well as the ones who are in the midst of it. I mean, there's lots of reasons, and all the reasons, for the most part, there's, a sh- there's oftentimes a shred or a lot of good in their reasoning. Sure. I'm not going to say it's, it's, a, it's not entirely good, right? But, yeah. the, the, but the reasoning and the processing, I mean, the, the abandonment. I mean, one reason is because they got abandoned. One reason is because they never intended it. One reason can be in cases of rape or in incest. Like, can't afford it. Yeah, yeah can't yeah. afford it. Like have too many, all yeah. the different Crush, like, external pressure, pressure. external mm-hmm. pressure. Like all of a sudden, mm-hmm. then you find another reason. Obviously, is that you find out that the child is malformed or it has a Down yeah. syndrome, or that you find out that the child's um, lungs are not going to develop and that the child's going to die within a few hours or a few weeks afterwards. Like you have all these different, all these different reasons. Which sympathetically, I think that we can all understand as well as sympathize with is like there's lots of reasons and oftentimes combined with good. Yeah. That's I think going back to like the understanding of like evil 
evil is not something which is 100% evil. Like, uh, there's no such thing as a positive evil, which is that there's something which is just evil. Right. Right? There's always, evil is, as Augustine talked about it, evil is the corruption of a good. Yeah. So every woman who chooses to get an abortion or is considering having an abortion, there is usually a good which they are considering. They're not choosing the abortion for the sake of that they are just evil and they want to do evil. They're protecting yeah, a good. Some that do, but you're right. Most of them don't. I, don't, I mean, yeah. I actually, have no, I've not yeah. come across actually one. I've come yeah. across um, one who actually just wanted the good. I mean, there's always a good, even if it, even if it's the good of their own perceived um, sure. stability or the what, how they mm -hmm. want their life to be, their future, the good of the future. I mean, that's another, another one. Like this is going to wreck my my career plan. So this is going to wreck my current relationship. This is going to he didn't want to have a kid right now. I want to well, have a kid. His. I want to have a kid. Yeah. He doesn't want to have a kid. He wants to have a kid. I don't want to have a kid right now. Mm -hmm. Like there's all these different reasons for why, and behind them is always a good. And yeah. so I'm saying there's always a good. Sure. But it's oftentimes a lesser good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the point. It's like it's a lesser good, which is it can be education. It can be finances, it can be all these different lesser opportunities, goods, opportunities, yeah. dreams that are not going to be actualized because this is going to change my dreams and scope for the future. So there's always a good. And I think that that's, for me, that's important to recognize is where's the good. Right. Because like there's a good that they're fighting for, but it's, it's often, but the problem is that it's a lesser good, which is that the lesser good is now being placed over the greater good, which is the right of this child's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and that the goodness and the beauty of this child's life, even if the child is, even if the child might even not be viable. Like there still is a goodness there. Yeah. Um, and I can speak from just my own family's personal um, experience of that. There still is a good, even in a non-viable life, mm -hmm. that is a beautiful gift from God that we can learn things as humanity mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's the thing is like there's a goods, there's multiple goods, but not all goods are equal. And that's the thing right. is like there's lots of goods, like minor goods, reasons, good reasons for why women or sometimes even men will choose to push for an abortion. But the yeah. point is this, the good is not more important than that greater good, which is life. Yeah. Because all those other reasons are dependent upon life existing. Yeah. yeah. This also comes to, and this is one of the, the areas of pressure or of influence is within the medical community. And I think that that's one of the things that, that does come over. I know lots of women who have been counseled to towards an abortion by people who, you know, Doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, you know, their OBGYNs and, yeah. and different pregnancy people. Pregnancy counselors. Pregnancy counselors. A mm -hmm. lot, lot, lot of different people that, that have, have, you know, have, that are in a trusted role and are sharing their opinion that because, for whatever reason, because of, of Down syndrome, because of, of uh, you know, fetal abnormalities or because of, of just your, your, your body's not in a good place. But there are lots of different reasons that are put forward, which that has its own weight too. And I think that's, that's to me, that's a huge breach of, you know, that medical, um, you know, fiduciary responsibility there. I think no one should be recommending anyone towards an abortion. But so that aspect, I think, I think can't be, you know, um, understated too, how influential that is. Yeah. People in positions of authority in the medical community are recommending and pushing that. And then you also have just the lobbying towards this. You have, you have multi-billion, billion, billion dollar corporations. I mentioned Planned Parenthood. Uh, being the you know the worst um, uh, kind of proponents and uh, of of this and federally funded uh, does more abortions than any other organization in the United States funds abortions worldwide and is 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 comes from a, a fundamentally eugenic contraceptive and abortive okay. abortion uh, minded. Uh, mind Margaret Sanger, who's the founder of Planned Parenthood. I love that when this goes on YouTube, they're gonna have a big um, you know thing underneath yeah. this. So if you're watching this on YouTube. Got underneath us here, you got this thing that says abortion. Get the facts, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Want to make sure we're, if we're talking about it. us. Yeah, yeah. sure, um, sure, sure. So, uh, but no, the, yeah. the, that's the reality. You can check the facts on Margaret Sanger there, yeah. as far as where Planned Parenthood comes from, um, and not doubting. Obviously, all those people who work at Planned Parenthood. I want them to be great saints. I want them to be transformed and converted. Yeah. I want them to know the love of God for them and, and to be forgiven for their sins, uh, just like me, and for us to be in heaven someday. Uh, but yeah, so, but I think that that's a major influence in our society as well. Yeah. One of the things that I'm told, and you probably have been uh, confronted with this as well, is, is okay, so I'm, I'm going to have the baby even though I don't want to. What do I do with it now because I don't want it? So all mm -hmm. these unwanted babies, I mean, what, what would we do if they're born? That, that's often what's thrown at us. So what do we do if, if we have a bunch of unwanted babies? Well, one, uh, I know many, many couples who can't get a child in the adoption agency because there's not enough kids out there and because it's also become an industry. 
Yeah. Like we're, it's very, very ridiculously expensive right now to adopt very. a child. And so I'm, I'm just, question, I question just in terms of the system of whether or not there's a lot of vested interest monetarily in keeping costs high and so forth. Now, I mean, there's- gonna, I agree with that too. Yeah, because so- Because it, 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 is, it makes it very difficult. And so for, for someone to, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great argument uh, for abortion in, in some ways because the because the people can't, so hard. Yeah, because yeah, the, system, the system becomes yeah. almost- Sorry almost ridiculously ho- mm-hmm. ridiculously absurd for people to adopt kids. People who want kids and want to have multiple kids right. are sterile for various different reasons. Yes. E- even even when there's agreement on both sides. We're not talking about a contested uh, Yeah, we're not uh, talking yeah, we're just talking about we're talking about two people, you know, one Yeah, person we're says, talking about two persons from still 10 to 15,000 yeah, dollars easy. But there's there's lots of if you were to, to change the way in which adoptions happen and make it not so that it doesn't cost yeah. 10 to 15,000 dollars but where it actually costs just enough to do a basic check. Are these good people? Are these? Mm-hmm. And there's lots of low income and, and moderate low income who actually can afford. They want to live according sure. to their lifestyle. Now, it might not be super a super wealthy one, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But there's but there's a thing. That's the thing is like there's lots of couples out there who would adopt and have adopt. And so I think that one obviously adoption, but you'd also at the same time you have to fix the adoption process, right? Right. At the same time, um, but then too, like it's also it's still it's, it's a false choice. To yeah. say that, okay, now we have all these extra mouths to feed in America, that's going to cripple our economic system and because of that. But there's also the point of like, we have so much money in America and we have so much, if you want to talk about food, like we, the, the government pays farmers to let food rot. Right. Right. So, right. I mean, just to control industry and control things like that. And we live in an overly controlling society. So like, it's a false choice to say, uh, we don't have enough money and we don't have enough food to feed all these people. Like um, one thing that we would have if we had an extra one seventh of our population, because that's basically what we've murdered in the last seven, in the last whatever, 60, 70 years that we've had uh, abortion throughout America, we've killed one seventh of our population, right? That's that's one seventh of our population is dead due to abortion roughly, right? And if you had that extra seventh of the population, we would not be at a negative, a negative population growth rate. Right. Yeah. Right. Because we're right now we're sitting. We want to be on a population bubble. No, we're you know, currently we're, like yeah. Americans are sitting. Social Security about to collapse. Yeah. Like Correct. Birth, right. you know, going like down. that's the whole yeah. thing. Economically, and there's lots of economists, people who are not religious whatsoever, are talking about the major problem in terms of uh, demographics and birth rates, right. and how like we are in a, if we didn't have immigration, because you either breed your population or you import it. Import it. One <laughs> and you have yeah. to have two point. You have to have two point one. Like right, we're sitting right now with native, native naturally, natural Americans are sitting about one point five to one point seven. Right, two years in a row. Right, going down. if we had an extra seven, if we had an extra seven percent of our population, yeah, like we would be sustainable and we wouldn't need the immigration. Like right now, like we wouldn't need all that. And the same thing is true with Europe. So if you if you got rid of abortion, you'd be at much more sustainable population levels, which would actually be econ- an economic boon because yeah. then you'd have the consumers. Who are young people who are actually buying buying right. stuff? So, the, but so that's what I'm saying is like it's it's a it's this idea that we that we would have too many people and it'd be too expensive. It, it's it's a false choice because it doesn't right. when you match it up to just secular economics, you match it up to um, people who want to adopt and can't adopt. I'm just saying like it would it actually it would work. It, yeah. We just have these these ideas these these common scare. Uh, straw men ideas that people don't really look into the details of is that actually true? Right. Mm-hmm. Is is overpopulation an actual thing? You look into that. It's a, it's a straw man. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like we we wouldn't have enough. We wouldn't have enough. We wouldn't have enough money for all the this one yeah. more seventh of the population. Yeah. No, we would. Right. Like, not not would enough, actually not enough land. Yeah. We already know we could fit like, the whole world's population into what the state of Florida. I think. I think it's Alaska. Yeah, but. Alaska. Yeah, but still, yeah. I mean, but yeah, still, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of land. We got we got some yeah we got some excess space right here. What was it? Well, Saint uh, Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa, that said. Uh, too many children. That's like saying there's too many flowers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a she also thing. and Christians always should be on the front front edge and, and always have been as far as you know adoption, as far as opening up their homes. But again, the truth of the matter isn't dependent on you know because that that's also the thing is like well unless you're adopting every single kid, you can't have an opinion right. on abortion. It's like no, no I can be so against good. dog fighting. I don't have to adopt every dog. Right. Like you know just to put it in right. very crass terms, right. like, yeah, I'm against that because it's a moral evil. And this. Much more so because we're dealing with 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 human life, and right. and like we said before, men are a part of the reproductive process. Yeah, 
And reproduction is not just women's issue, it's also men's and women's. And we share equal burden and equal weight in terms of responsibility. And therefore, we also have to have equal weight and equal responsibility in the decision-making process. And when you, right. when you cut men out of the decision-making process, they're not gonna take any responsibility. Which right. is actually what historically what it we have has happened in the last like sixty years is that men no longer take responsibility for their role in the reproductive process. Well, it's a comedian that said, "If you can choose to to kill the baby, I can choose to abandon it." <laughs> it is, yeah, that's kind of the it's mentality. A very, very, that, very dark, very dark humor, it, but it yeah, is very dark humor. But, but we're seeing yeah. that that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's actually what's happening. It, it's almost prophetic. So, mm. yeah. So. Let's end with a prayer. So, Lord, we lift up today uh, everyone who's watched this, everyone who's who's listened to this, everyone who's maybe uh, impacted by abortion, every woman who's been tempted by abortion or been, been experienced that in her life. Pray for all children lost through abortion. We pray, Lord, for healing. Uh, we're, we're sinners. Uh, we need your mercy, Lord. Anything that we've said today that, that uh, doesn't uh, just help people to feel encouraged and strengthened, uh, we, we, we lay that at your feet. But to help every person who hears us today, Lord, to know that they are loved, no matter what decisions they've made or even mistakes they've made, that you are a God of forgiveness and mercy, and that every human life has infinite worth and dignity because it's made in your image and likeness. So be with us, Lord, and ask Mary, our mother, St. Joseph, to pray with and for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on Catholic America for this very important conversation. Uh, we're so glad you're with us. If you would, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thank you.